I'm Alistair McIntosh, welcoming you to this week's big budget Halloween special of First Things First. Well, it's a scary time for tenants and shared owners with the cost of living crisis, and it's a scary time for landlords too. How do we strike the right balance? Ombudsman brought out another report last week on noise. As ever, an excellent report. But one of the landlords that's criticised time and time again in the Ombudsman reports suffered an £800 million cut after the last rent reduction measures in England. Those two facts are not entirely unrelated. And it's interesting the Ombudsman constantly asks for more local management because that's the proven answer. So too did Clive Betts Committee. With that in mind, I travelled to Glasgow last week to the Glasgow and West of Scotland Forum of Community Controlled Housing Organisations. And that room, we're talking to the Minister and they're saying, come on, let us set our own rents. We are of the community. Trust us to do what we've done in the past and set modest rent increases that don't track inflation when inflation is rocketing ahead. We wait to hear what the minister decides to do. But as I look around the room, <coughs> it struck me that many of those landlords were formed through stock transfer from local authorities. Why did that movement take place? It took place because of decades of low investment, governments to blame for some of that, but also the councils were culpable, far too keen to pass on low rent increases to quote cheap popularity rather than to look at the stock soberly. Still happening to this day, Wandsworth Council passed on a 0% rent increase and lo and behold, Quasio comes along and finds all sorts of problems with the stock. So low rents might be popular, but they're not always a panacea. Let's take that trust point that was raised by the Scottish associations. Could we run with that? Well, why not? Why not have a situation where a landlord sets its own rent in conjunction with staff and tenants using facts about stock condition, necessary repairs and the rate of inflation on those repairs and earmarking some funds for a rainy day down the track? What's wrong with that? Well, potentially one of the problems, Dr Janice Wright comes in to spoil the party, is that academic research from Denmark shows that sometimes residents vote for the lowest possible rent increase and that causes problems down the track. But let's not dismiss the idea because of the Danish situation. Why do we have a situation where Tenants across the United Kingdom can work with a landlord to set a reasonable rent increase dealing with all of the circumstances, affordability to tenants and the need to maintain the stock. You can see the joint interest there. Of course, there may be some places where we run into trouble, we run into trouble with any system. So why couldn't you have a situation where the regulator would call in? a certain amount of rent increases every year to make sure they were set properly and allowed for sensible investment in the stock. If we don't do that, we will walk into a worse set of circumstances. There is every possibility that in the next couple of years, regulators will be slamming landlords for poor standards that are caused in no small measure by the rigid rent increases applied by those self-same regulators. We've a chance to avoid this crash, let's hope we take it. Trust the public, have a sensible regulatory system, and we will see rents that make sense in the future. Thanks for your attention, I hope to see you soon, and to calm everyone down, I've got a nice film of a babbling brook, or burn as we call it in Scotland. Goodbye.